Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV. This is Chris, and today I was going to be talking about some interesting, uh, interesting bullet experiments that I've been working on. Um, so I've been reloading 38 and 357 for a while now. I've got a couple different bullet molds. Um, I've saved a bunch of money. Uh, it's to a point now. I've been shooting a lot of videos, and doing a lot of stuff. Uh, I was looking into reloading 9 millimeter. I had another thing come up. And uh, I started reloading 40 and 10 millimeter. And to do that, I needed to figure out a way to jack the bullet, so I got into powder coating. And I can make a video about that stuff, and obviously we'll cover the gun that's in 40 and 10 millimeter at some point. But uh, in the meantime, that, that worked really well. It got my 40 down to like four or five bucks a box, and the 10 millimeters right about there. Um, so I looked into 9 mil, because now with the powder coating solution, 9 mil, you can do it at home and end up with something that's jacketed, kind of like FMJ or uh, a coated bullet. And uh, you can shoot it in stuff like a Glock. I mean, that was my big thing is most of my 9 I shoot in a Glock. And you're not supposed to shoot plain lead bullets. But now with the jacketing from the powder coat, it seems to work well. So let me show you what I was working on. So when I first ordered the 9 dies, I didn't actually have a 9 mold. So this is actually a 38... 105 grain Lee semi wad cutter and this is what the actual bullet looks like um, according to Lee and according to some stuff I saw online these when sized down to 356 and some guns you can shoot them at 358 will work passably as a 9 millimeter bullet now I wasn't sure if that would actually pan out but seeing as I had the time and I had the mold, I figured I would cast a bunch up. Now, this is a standard round nose 9 mil. This is a truncated cone 9 mil. I did actually buy the correct mold after I made these up. And you can see that these two, when lined up, I'll throw up a picture that's a little bit clearer, they, they kind of match the truncated cone all the way up until the point matches a round nose. Now this thing, is nowhere close so we'll see how it's gonna feed so I saw online some people were saying that these things work great in their nine mils some people are saying they didn't um, obviously it's gonna vary depending on the gun these are really short is the big issue so it's gonna depend on the feed mechanism but in an effort to test it and get a better idea I figured I'd put together some random nine mils out of my collection and we'll just see how it feeds in different guns and then from there you know if you have one of these guns at home and it either feeds or doesn't feed you know um, it is, like I said, short. Now, I did experiment with one or two guns and I had some jamming issues. So I tried actually seating the bullet further out. The problem was is when it was further out, it would contact the rifling when the bullet, when the bullet was chambered. So to me, that's very unsafe and uh, it can cause increases in pressures. It can cause uh, squib bloats and cause all kinds of problems. So I don't recommend seating these further out. Um, if they don't seat in this crimp groove, I think it measured right about exactly an inch or just a tiny bit shy of it. Um, if that doesn't feed in your gun, I would recommend not seating those out further. But without further ado, uh, like I said, I've assembled some Ruger Blackhawks. And you're like, why does he have Ruger Blackhawks? Well, I actually have the 35738 convertibles to 9 mil. So I've got 9 mil cylinders in those. I've got a 5906 Smith & Wesson Shield, a Star Super B. A CZ75B, the Browning High Power that I just did that overhaul video on, a Norinco 213, a High Point C9, and a Glock 19. I'm going to take them down to the range and we'll see how they shoot. So for the first gun, we've got a shield. It's got a 8 round mag filled with 8 rounds. And we'll see how it runs. Cycled fine, fed fine. So the next gun we've got is a Glock 19. This one's got 10 rounds. Fed, cycled fine. So the next gun is a Star Super B. Holds, I believe, eight rounds. Fed, lock back, everything worked fine. 
So the next gun, Smith & Wesson 5906. Now this one does have some extraction issues. I need a new spring for it. But we'll see how it shoots with these goofy bullets. If it feeds, that's the main concern. Fed, cycle, block back, everything worked fine. The next gun is an Orinco 213. Essentially a Tokarev. We'll see how it feeds. Fed everything, cycled just fine. So the next gun is my tuned up Browning High Power with the SFS kit. I just like playing with that thing, it's so cool. Once again, 10 rounds, fed, cycled, fed, everything fine. Next gun, the CZ-75B, 10 rounds. And we had a stoppage. As you can see, it just kind of nosedived up. So I actually shot these, and this is all I had with this gun, and my shield did it a few times. So I assumed these weren't going to work in any gun, but it turns out it's just the CZ that seems to not like them. So to clear it, we'll see if we can resume firing. So we had one stoppage and it just shot right up into the barrel hood or whatever you want to call it, that little point that sticks out. Um, I think the problem is they're so short that they can pop forward out of the feed lips and just bounce up versus actually feed in the chamber because there's nothing grabbing them by the time the mag feed lips drop them. So this gun is a high point C9, not the best gun. Everybody knows about high points. They are cheap guns, but usually for being cheap, they do work. So we'll see if it feeds, I think it's an eight round mag. good. So thus far, the only gun that actually had a problem was the CZ-75, which like I said, I, I thought they were all going to have feed problems after the CZ, and the shield choked down a few. We probably shot maybe two, three hundred of them out of the shield with CZ-75, but the CZ was pretty consistently bad. Um, so I, you know, but everything else seems to be running these really well, surprisingly. So we know that the Blackhawks are going to feed because they're single action revolvers. But I figured I'd play cowboy, dress up in my gun belt with my brace of Blackhawks, and we'll see if we can hit that target. So they actually didn't shoot that well in the Blackhawks. Seemed to be kind of all over the place. Now the sights are probably set up. I probably have them set for some heavy 357 stuff. And I found that with the 9mm, it seems to shoot low. I think because the smaller, lighter bullets move a lot faster and there's less recoil. So you don't get the barrel rise that you would with a heavy bullet. I found even when shooting commercial 9, it seems to be not that great. Also, you got to remember these bullets in a 357 revolver that's 358 sized, they're kind of small. So especially on a light load like this, they're not going to necessarily grab the rifling correctly and obturate. So let's go load up a couple of the guns that worked well, and we'll see if we can hit the target. Maybe I'll throw some cans and some stuff out there. Okay, I've got some soda cans out there. We'll see what I can hit. Okay, now with the Star Super B. I ate shit on that one. Okay, now with the Glock 19.
they seem to shoot a little low like I said that can be because they're really light so there's not much rise it's kind of weird shooting bullets this light got the 5906 those of you who watched the other video uh, I did shine this up in the meantime when I got it, it was all holster worn uh, I polished it with scotch bright and it was kind of matte all over but I figured I'd spice it up a little and shine the slide in the frame so it's like a two-tone matte and shiny Last, we'll try the shield. Seemed to shoot okay. So I was actually pleasantly surprised. Um, most of the guns functioned okay uh, when I was shooting at targets. Um, this last time, a couple of them had some feed issues and stuff. You gotta remember, it's not the right feed profile. Um, it did work surprisingly well. The only one that really seems to hate those is the CZ75. Um, it might just be how the feed loops on the mag are, or just how it's designed. It does not like those bullets, so if you're thinking about it for CZ75, I would avoid it. Um, but, you know, my thing is, with 105 grain bullets, you're only paying, I think it's something like 80, almost 80 bullets to a pound of lead, and you can get scrap lead for about a dollar. So, you know, you could reload those for somewhere around 250. Now, that's for a box. Now, with the TC, they're 120 grain, so you get a few, you get like 60 bullets to a pound, and those, you know, it's like 275 for a box of 50. So, it's probably, if you're going to shoot a lot of 9 mil, it's probably better get a specialized 9 mil mold. But if you just want to mess around or you're waiting for 9mm mold, you can load those up and they seem to shoot okay-ish. Not like super accurate or anything, but uh, definitely worth checking out. For Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm probably going to do another video about the, the TC 9mm bullets. Uh, some other reloading stuff. Like I said, there's some 9 or is there some 40 and some 10mm reloading I've been doing. I'll show you what that's for one of these days. And uh, if you like this video, click thumbs up. If you didn't, click thumbs down. Uh, if you got a comment or question, make sure you leave me a comment. I do try and get back to everybody. And uh, if you like this kind of video, subscribe and uh, give me some suggestions. And uh, I will film some more stuff. Thanks for watching.